Hello, welcome to my channel. Dogma Discussions, this is Vincent. Today, I'm going to talk about the dogma of fear. If you're new to the channel, welcome. What I do is I tell a story for 10 or 15 minutes and uh, just about something that I've noticed that seems to be a dogma in society, something, um, by meaning dogma, something that can't be questioned, uh, almost like a religion. Some things I discuss are religious dogmas. Other things are just what's become like religious dogma. And <clears throat> today I want to discuss what I call the dogma of fear. So, here we go. Oh, please uh, like the video, subscribe, share the video. Leave me a comment. Ben Franklin once said, Those who would temporarily trade liberty for security deserve neither. <clears throat> and what would cause us to make this trade? Fear. Yet, for most of us in developed countries, we don't generally live in fear. Oh, we may have our moments when faced with scary street people or news of home invasions or riots, but our lives are fairly regular and comfortable. Yet, the past couple of years, fear has become ubiquitous in our society. In fact, the population has been terrorized to the extent that People have, and many still do, mask while driving alone in their cars or outside riding their bikes. I still encounter people hiking mask. Little children and healthy people, although at very little risk, wear masks. America's quote-unquote doctor is suggesting masking still. Where does it end? John Locke the Enlightenment philosopher, is very clear on bodily autonomy. He said, Every man has a property in his own person. This nobody has any right to but himself. The labor of his body and work of his hands, we may say, are properly his. This quote makes two points. First, if you don't have freedom over your body, you don't have freedom. And secondly, you have a right to the fruits of your labors. Locke doesn't say, unless the government decides to shut your job down or take your bodily autonomy away. Does he? And who supported making us afraid in order to control us? In light of the politically rights past McCarthyism, I assumed it would have been them. Yet, in this case, it was mostly those who leaned left politically, the non-religious, supposedly rational, science-believing, quote-unquote, liberals. Surprisingly, it was the people who constantly tout personal freedom and bodily autonomy, who were afraid, who supported governmental control, who would seemingly, seemingly, forcibly keep us masked and boosted into double digits if possible. And sadly, for quite some time, through fear-mongering and hateful speech, the leftist in government controlled us, our comings and goings, shutting down businesses with little care for people's livelihoods and took away our bodily autonomy and the right to our own opinion. So what? We had St. Fauci, the self-appointed nation's physician, to guide us. He was on the news and talk shows constantly warning us about the dangers of the virus, that we shouldn't stop vaccinating and masking, that we shouldn't become complacent. His influence was astounding. In my office, there was a lady who said that her entire family, quote, followed the science. 
If Dr. Fauci said to wash your groceries, we washed our groceries, unquote. She commented, beaming with pride. I remember watching her speak about this. Eyes sparkling, chin up, a sanctimonious look on her face. While I knew that there was no evidence that washing groceries for a respiratory virus would be effective. Yet people did it anyway. Why? Fear. Well, at least President Biden kept the country calm and didn't fan the flames. Right? Well, let's see. In Biden's speech on December 21st, 2021, when addressing the concerns citizens had about celebrating the holidays together, President Biden said regarding those who were vaccinated, you've done the right thing. You could enjoy the holidays. Yet, if you had chosen not to be vaccinated, where did you stand? The answer comes a little later in the same speech when the president says, All these people who have not been vaccinated, you have an obligation to yourselves, to your family, and, quite frankly, to your country. And I, honest to God, believe it's your patriotic duty. Let's unpack these statements for a moment. First, an obligation is a duty or commitment that is morally or legally binding. Through Biden's speech and actions, he tried to make it both. Patriotism, on the other hand, is devotion to and eager support for one's country. Thus, in light of the president's words, if you don't get vaccinated, you're violating the law and are immoral and lack devotion to your country and fellow citizens. This reminds me of a conversation that I had with an old friend at the time, now ex-friend. We both had jobs that were easily transitioned from working in the office to working from home. Yet, I knew many others in the service industry and, having been brought up in a working class environment, had done my time in those types of jobs. So, I was looking at the shutdown in light of both what it was doing to the widespread economy and the many individuals who had so little savings that they might never recover. <clears throat> and she, an emotional and fearful person, was overwhelmed, panicked, and angered by the stories of those individuals afflicted who were forced to die alone without the comfort of their loved ones. One such conversation we had went like this. Let me take you to that moment. So, she says, fist clenched and drawn down at her sides, eyes angry, face tense. What about Johnny dying? Don't you care? He died of COVID. Sure, I like Johnny, I reply and continue. But he was 80, had a slew of health problems. The doctors hadn't given him long before COVID. Oh, she counters. Since he was old and had health problems, his life just didn't matter then, huh? I walked towards her, reaching out a comforting hand, seeking through gentle touch to de-escalate the conversation and express my empathy regarding her fear. Yet, like a deer suddenly leaps away when startled by the snap of a twig. So my friend jumped back, putting her arms up in a defensive motion while stating emphatically, I don't know what's happened to you. You just aren't the same compassionate person I once knew. You only care about the economy, not individual people. Apparently, I had no right to my own view if I wasn't afraid and cowering. As you can imagine, the conversation ends there. What's the point of continuing? Our perspectives are so different, reconciliation is, obviously, not an option. Thus, I leave and drive to a place where I can view the nearby mountain range. The sun is waning. It's setting, bringing a mixture of light and shadow over the landscape. I stand for a moment, putting myself mentally in those peaks and valleys, closing my eyes I imagine 
walking through the forest. Like a mountain lion, oblivious to the fear of COVID that humans below are feeling, a beast courageously going through the motions of survival that wild animals endure daily. As my eyes open, I am overcome with sadness that my good friend, one whom I had known for many years, considers me to be uncaring. It hurts beyond words. How can she not see how many people are being harmed by the government's policies? What about those who have or will commit suicide as a result of the shutdown? What about those who develop terminal diseases during this time because they're denied regular health screenings? What about the four in 10 adults now crippled by symptoms of anxiety and depression because of the pandemic compared to one in 10 adults pre-pandemic? Decisions have consequences. Policies have consequences. Although the government says there are no issues with the vaccine, young women report fertility problems, young men, heart inflammation. And I wonder in time if others, middle-aged and older, will also begin to show reactions to the jab. Why later? Well, middle-aged and older people often have health problems which may initially make the vaccine reactions more difficult to identify. Remember, nothing in life is free. Decisions about our health often have consequences. And if these decisions are made for you, your ability to live as a free person has been compromised. So welcome to the new millennium. People say that Rome wasn't built in a day. True. It was a republic for 500 years before it shifted into autocracy. And what brought it to that point? Income inequality, political polarization, and greed. You mean the type of greed that allows Big Pharma to become rich through a government experimenting on its own citizens? Yeah, something like that. And it's not like anything bad ever happens when a government takes away the rights of its citizenry, does it? Oh, wait, we have many examples of this in human history. And it never ends well. Thus, why go there? Ben Franklin didn't want that for us. I am convinced that Locke wouldn't have either. So what do we do? Be vigilant and resilient. Realize that life has risks and accept them. Live free or die, as the official motto of New Hampshire states. For every time the government takes a freedom away, we risk not recovering it. Like the old saying goes, should we trust the government? Ask an Indian. Look at history. Pay attention to what's happening in society, not just within the dogma of your tribe. And never let others rule you. Listen to what's being said. Do your own research and make your own decisions. You will be much happier and hopefully remain free. Okay, that's my story for today. Thank you for listening. Uh, please like and uh, subscribe to the channel. Leave me a comment and uh, share the video. Until next time, this is Vincent. Goodbye.